What is up guys, Rob here with RK Motorsports and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to change the backlighting color on your Kawasaki Ninja 636 gauge. Now you can see it's kind of like that boring orange amber color and uh, kind of with the uh, you know the outside RPM and the inside where the speed is it's all that orangish color. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking apart the gauge. I'm going to take this uh, off and take it home. I'm going to split the case open and on the board there's going to be a bunch of these little orange LEDs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop those off and pop in some new colors and it'll completely change the look of the gauge. Now this method um, I'm going to be showing you guys will work for an 03 up to an 06 uh, Kawasaki Ninja 636. And the gauges are very similar um, on the ZX-10s and the Kawasaki Z1000s um, in the same uh, year range. So um, without further ado, I'm going to be taking this gauge off and taking it home. And I'm going to start splitting it apart and we're going to get started on this thing. Now real quick, what you're going to need to do in order to take this off. Obviously, I have basically all the fairings off the bike already. So you're going to need to do that. Um, but after you get the fairings off, there's going to be a few screws on the back holding the gauge cluster in. There's going to be one there, one there, and there's another one underneath in the back. And then once you get those off, you can pop the gauge cluster out. And then you're going to need to pop this little guy. Let me put this phone down for a second. And with the magic, there we go. So I got that popped off, and this is the gauge cluster now. So now I'm going to be taking this home, and I'm going to start working on this and doing the transformation. All right, guys, so I'm back home with the gauge cluster now, and before I get started on doing it, the modifications for this, I want to go over a few things that you're going to need in order to do that. The first thing you're going to need is a Phillips head screwdriver. Any smaller size will work uh, just because the you know, the screw heads are pretty small on the back side of this. Um, the next thing you're going to need is a soldering iron. This is kind of a bigger setup. It's fully adjustable, but, you know, any any smaller uh, just plug in the wall uh, soldering pen will do just fine. This one is the one that I've kind of been using for a while. And uh, you're going to need a power supply. This one is a, you know, a, again, it's a bigger uh, version of, you know, anything that you'll probably need to do this. But this is, a, again, a fully adjustable uh, power supply. I, uh, I, I like to turn it on and have it set to uh, 12 volts. That's really all you need. You could even literally just hook up a couple wires to a, a, a 12 volt battery and uh, plug it into the gauge and, and you, you'll, you'll be working fine. Another thing you'll need is solder for the soldering iron. And the last thing you're gonna need is the LEDs. Now these are special LEDs specifically for the board um, they are really small but if you search online uh, 1210 PLCC2 LEDs they will pop up and they're fairly cheap you can get a bunch you can get like 50 for I don't know like 10 bucks or something um, but these are the two colors I'm going to be going with I'm gonna have the blue and green I did this color combo before on another bike and it turned out really awesome I had a blue ring around the outside with green in the middle right there so that's what i'm going to be re recreating now that's what you need to get started and uh, from there the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be taking off all of the little screws on the back there's i think five all together um, there's one in the middle and four on the corners so we're going to get started with that and uh, start this process Now after you've removed all of the screws out of the back of the gauge cluster housing, you're going to want to take this back piece off of the gauge cluster <clears throat> and then make sure that the board stays on that front piece. There's going to be four more screws that we're going to have to take out. This one, and this one right here, that one, and that one. We're going to take those four screws out and then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay. 
Okay, so now that we've got these four screws removed out of those corners, next thing we're gonna wanna do is take the board out of the casing, set the casing to the side, and then there's gonna be this clip here on the end. There's all these pins that are connected basically through this, this port to the front of the board. We're gonna wanna carefully separate this back piece from the front and then we're gonna basically just set this back piece to the side for now. And now in here, see if I can clear this up a little bit. So there's gonna be these little tabs here, 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 and then the same on the bottom side too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flatten these tabs out so that they're completely flat and then we're gonna slide the board um, this this metal piece out of this board. It's helpful to have a tiny uh, set of pliers for this part. Um, I guess that's something that I forgot to mention in the beginning. Um, so basically all you're gonna do is take that little tab and rotate it so that it's flat. And then same with this one. Take that tab bend it out of the way so that it's flat. Now once you have all those tabs flattened out on either side, next thing you're gonna wanna do is gently pry and pull that back board away from the front. Now this, we're gonna set to the side, make sure it's on some soft surface, that way it doesn't scratch up the front. And now here, you can see all of these little white squares. These are gonna be the LEDs that we're gonna be switching out. Now these one, two, three, four, five, six around the outside, these are gonna be for that outer ring. And now this one, two, three, four, five, six right here, these are gonna make up that, that inner rectangular piece that's gonna display the miles per hour. So this is gonna be the backlighting for this portion and then these are gonna control the outer ring color. Now, one thing to note, on these LEDs, you can see there's a tiny black triangle to the top left. Now there is a, basically a little chamfered edge on each of these LEDs. Basically it looks like there's a little corner cut off. When we, when we take these old LEDs off and pop the new LEDs in, we're gonna wanna make sure that that, that chopped off edge lines up with that same side that that black triangle is on because that it's gonna make sure that the positive and negative sides of the LED are in the correct position and if it's flopped, the LED is not gonna light up. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to take these LEDs off of the board. Now, right now I have my soldering gun heated up and it is up to temperature and we're going to take our tweezers. This is where it gets a little, a little tricky. I'm going to see if I can zoom in real good for you guys. So basically what I'm going to do, clean off the soldering iron tip. What we're going to do is we're going to want to heat up one side of the LED and then basically just pull up on that side. So we're going to heat up the solder. Easier said than done, right? There we go. So we're going to heat that up and then just lift up on that same side that we just lifted up. And we're going to repeat this for all of the LEDs. Here we go again. I'm just going to heat and lift. And now to take these LEDs, just for an example to show you guys how to do this, to take these LEDs completely off the board now. We're just gonna heat up the other side. And pop it off of that pad. 
So now you can see that we've got two nice clean pads for our new LED to lay down on. And I'm going to do this one too just to show you guys again. Kind of bend that LED back down. Heat up that other side. And we've got those two nice clean pads. So that is how we take those LEDs off of the board. And now I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna take the rest of these LEDs off and then we're, I'm gonna show you how to put the new LEDs back. Okay, so in order to place the new LEDs on the board, you're gonna to wanna to grab your new pack of LEDs, pull back the film, drop one LED on the board, you're going to want to rotate it so that that corner is on the top left. Get some solder on your soldering gun. So you're going to want to get a nice little pool of solder on one side. Slide that in there, wait for it to dry. And then you're going to want to spin that around. solder on there and heat up that other pad and then just apply a little other dab of solder and that's all it is so that's how you apply the LEDs um, and then after ev everything's all set I like to go through and just kind of wipe off the excess kind of clean that up a little bit that way we don't have a lot of solder poking around um, so I already went through and did the outside ring. All I have to do is the inside LEDs now in that little rectangle area. So I'm going to go through the, and do those ones and then I will show you the reassembly process. So I've got all of the LEDs back on the board all soldered on now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this piece back on and then I'm going to put it through those same grooves and then once they're through the board I'm going to fold those tabs over. I'm going to plug this piece back into those pins with that plug in on the back and basically just uh, repeat um, and go back on the process that I used to take the gauge apart. So after this I'm going to skip forward to the gauge completely reassembled and I'm going to show you guys how to power up your gauge without being on the bike. So I have finally got the gauge cluster all back together, all the bolts and screws are put back in there, everything's tightened up. Now the whole look of this has not really changed so much since we've started, um, but the real change is really going to be shown once we power this thing up. Now if for some reason you don't have access to your bike and you need to power this up just to make sure all the LEDs work, that's where these uh, the 12 volt uh, power supply is going to come in handy. So what you're going to want to do is there's all these little pins on the back. Now the two that you're going to be main, mainly focused on is going to be the one on the far bottom left. That's going to be your negative wire. So you're going to want to just pop that in there just to have some power connected to there. And then your top left pin is going to be your positive. So I'm just going to pop the wire on there just so we have some power going to those two pins. And now when I turn on the power supply, that is where we really see everything come together. That nice blue and we've got that awesome green in the middle here. So that is how you change the backlighting on your 2003 through 2006 Kawasaki Ninja 636 gauge cluster 
This will all, also work for uh, Kawasaki Z1000s within that same year range and some of the ZX10s also. You can also use the same method for some other bikes. However, sometimes some boards are different and the soldering techniques might be a little bit different, but this complete walkthrough is how you do it on the Kawasaki 636 models. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, found this helpful. If you guys like this, drop a like button below, hit that subscribe button, and let me see some feedback in the comments of how you guys uh, use this method to customize your bike. So uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.